Hi, everybody. Once again, yes, we're here. Bob Lorenz, Ian Joy with you, and we are about to flood the zone with sports. Always love talking about the continuing evolution of getting these sports back. And Ian, I'm not sure where to begin. They're going to play the U.S. Open tennis tournament with no fans. We just found that out. Serena Williams says she's committed to it. Uh, We've got the WNBA coming back. And then we got the template for the NBA coming back and what it's going to be like living in that bubble. So where do you want to begin? So much to talk about, Bob. It's great to see you as always. Uh, This is awesome that we're getting an opportunity to talk about so many sports coming back in the fashion that they're coming back. It's exciting times. Some of the rules and regulations are a little crazy and a little out there, but I'm loving it. All right, so let's break it down for the NBA. They plan hopefully to start late July. 100 plus page handbook, 33 page player handbook, just to go through to figure out how they're going to live for 50 or more days in three separate hotels in Orlando. Wow. I mean, 108 pages was what they said about this, this rule book and the regulations that they were put forth to the players and for the officials and for anyone else who's involved in this. I think it's quite amazing, really, to see that the players and obviously the league itself really coming together and putting this plan of awesomeness together. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of dedication, but a lot of acceptance. Not easy. Ian, as you looked over everything that the players are going to have access to, what were some of the cool things that stood out to you? So many cool things really caught my attention, Bob, but I've got to admit the magic bands and the proximity alarms really stood out. I want a customized proximity alert. Like, I'd love to have something that after five seconds, it's like, get away from me, or something. (laughs) Maybe your own voice, and you could say something like that. I'd love it. Just use a megaphone anywhere you go. And I I can actually picture you in the studio. When you return back into the studio, just walking around with your megaphone. (laughs) That's that's five feet. I like six feet. Please just move yourself away from me. All the sound effects. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Ten decibels, people going out of their minds. You know, it's interesting, too, some of the entertainment options that these players are going to have, too. They'll have to get there initially. They'll have to quarantine for a couple days, be tested, and then they start moving towards practicing and playing these games. But Disney's saying, hey, we're going to try and get these guys backstage tours. We're going to try and get them first-run movies that haven't been released yet. You really feel the fingerprints of Disney welcoming these players in and saying, we're going to take care of you and make sure that you know, you don't feel like you're stuck in this bubble. Well, it's not easy to entertain millionaires. This is different, and this is going to be a challenge. It really is different, and that's the hard part for a lot of these players and the people who are put into this position for them to realize. It's not going to be this, this awesome adventure. It's going to be completely different. So, you know, for me, it's going to be tough. Uh, but it's also pretty cool. And I think the players are a lot of being asked of them to be able to take pay cuts in their salaries, to be able to agree to the amount of games and the format that they're going to have to be able to practice and play these games in. But the outside of what's going on for their entertainment value, having to lock themselves in quarantine until they test uh, a couple of times over the period of 24 hours so that there's there's no, no positive test, that's really important. You know, the small detail is what matters most. And, and then what happens when someone does test positive, if someone actually does? You know, it, it's really cool, the plan that everybody's put together here. And it goes back to what we've been talking about, Bob. For the last, what, two, three months? How cool it will be to have sports back. And yeah. what an opportunity this is for these associations, for the NBA right now, and for, for us as a network, for the big networks, for them to be able to play around with this, some cool new angles of how yeah. the game will be shown to fans, to viewers. I mean, this is endless amounts of opportunity here for people to see the game differently. I love it. Yeah, we've talked about that. I like the idea of the different camera angles. And, you know, this is a point you brought up. I think it was about two months ago when we were talking about the German Soccer League and some of the European leagues coming back. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of putting a cutout of fans in the stands. And if we can't have fans in the stands, right, I know you can do that electronically and that sort of thing digitally. How about Bob Lorenz and Ian Joy for 20 bucks or – 50 bucks if we want to pay for it, pay for a cardboard cutout. It's a way to generate some income. But then could you imagine looking around the stadium and you see all these crazy bodies and heads and, you know, you could, your shot could be like, 
something like that. Like you're going crazy cheering for the game, even though you can't be there in person. I love the fact that you're thinking outside of the box here. And this is what we should all be doing right now. I've got a new one for you, Bob. Yes. So this, was, this was another one at a game in Scandinavia somewhere. I forget. I believe it was like Sweden or Denmark. So what they did do is instead of having the cardboard cutout, instead of having like a paper cutout or a cardboard cutout in the stadium where people can pay and put their face there and it'll be a really nice sponsored event. What they did do is they put up big screens all the way around. It was like 20 foot screens and they used like a platform, like a Zoom or like a FaceTime platform where Fans could pay a little bit of money to charity or to, to the teams or whatever it was for, pay five bucks or 10 bucks, and your square box with your picture appeared on the outside of the, the field, which for me was incredible. So you actually had, I think it was like 500 people were on the outside, sitting at home, just watching the game, and your face was right there on the outside of the field. I thought it was a really cool idea. I love it. That's brilliant. It's a way to take up real estate in the seats, so it looks like there's actually activity, fandom. Did they, did they get the audio as well, do you know, from those things pumped yeah. in or – yeah. yeah, so they're they're basically not from the fans who are at home okay. watching in. Prior to kickoff, yeah, yeah, they had the fans being able to sing a song together and things oh, like that. Oh, love it. That's cool, right? So they put it yeah. through the public tannoid system so everybody can hear it. I love that idea. Um, but when the game got going, obviously, it's, it's quiet as normal. I think when, like, a goal went in, they were able to cheer, you know, and they could sing right. or whatever. And then they went back to, to having just the regular uh, output from the field. But getting creative, and that's what we all have to do right now, Bob. And the fans also have to accept that as well. This is different, but it's really cool. Yeah, I think it's interesting, too, how these leagues are finding these great areas to go. Obviously, Disney has the facilities for the NBA, for MLS soccer, which will be coming back. The WNBA is going to be at the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida, so they have the infrastructure to show these games. NBA, by the way, how about this? If you want to – you're a big NBA fan. You're going to be able to watch five to seven games played a day because they got to get the regular season done and then the playoffs. I mean – you could be nonstop, like toothpicks in the eyes, just watching TV and watching these games. I mean, it's really incredible. I mean, this is opening up a, ho a whole new generation for, for youngsters. And this is what I'm excited for, for people who for three months have had no sports in their lives, all of a sudden are having sports 24 seven, you know, for the next generation, for these kids, they're going to get used to this as well. They're going to be like, why is there no sports today when we get back to yeah. normal? I mean, this is really cool. It's great for us all. I'm excited to see how creative we can get as a network as well. Yeah. You know, what can we do? What can me and you do, Bob? How can we make the viewing experience better right. we've had some crazy ideas and i think now's the time if we want to implement those ideas and i think it's also really important to get that feedback from the viewer from the fan you know yeah. how are they enjoying this whole experience maybe we find that one or two of these cool new formats might just stick you never know by the way one thing before i let you go thinking about all the entertainment stuff that the nba players will have you can play ping pong only singles not doubles because that would not be safe social distancing I could totally see if this applied to you and me, we'd start, you and I would start a little ping pong friendly match at let's say 10 PM. And suddenly we'd look up and it's 4 AM. We're like, what happened? We're sweaty. We played like 30 mat games. You could see that happening, right? At a ping pong table, you and me. Yeah. And I can see about 20, 30 people just gathering around the table, cheering us on as we're going about our business, competing against each other. Can you imagine putting all these athletes in one place, all they know how to do in their life, is compete. Yes. It doesn't matter what they do, they're going to find a way to find competition. And I, I love every single minute of it. I wish it was a part of it. Yep. It's going to be beautiful madness. We look forward to it. Ian, great to see you. See you next time. Always a pleasure, my man.